So, welcome. Um, today we are going to talk about um, a few problems I have encountered with the Drunksy X5S, X5SA500 Pro and what I have done to solve them, fix them and what you can potentially do to do the same to fix a few problems. So, but instead of, well, instead of pretty much talking here theoretically about them, showing a few pictures, I would say um, we should go to the printer and watch what I have modified and watch what the problems might be. It's a little bit more interactive than just sitting around here. So, give me a few seconds and uh, we'll be back, or you'll be back with me. Um, in front of the printer and then we can discuss the problems and the fixes. So, I guess let's start up and go to the printer. Welcome in the workshop, I guess. Um, as I have said, we are here to discuss the uh, well problems and um, what I've encountered um, the printer doing or malfunctions that the printer is doing and uh, a few fixes how to solve a few problems. So let's, um, I guess, take a little bit of a um, course around the printer, what I've changed so far, and a few improvements I have done, and uh, what is my general opinion after the time I've used it now, and especially the small hiccups, fixes that you can do at home, and how to solve a few problems. So for that, I guess let's get the printer from this position here, which is pretty much in the corner, right around the other printers I have, um, into a more... Um, few friendly position right in the middle of the uh, space here. So let me set up the camera and let's move the printer. So now that we have moved the printer a little bit out of the corner here, um, I guess let's start with the problems I have encountered so far. First thing I have encountered is here. These um, belts tend to make a lot of noise rubbing against these pulleys here. The best thing, or the thing that solved it for me is, instead of having the, um, the flat part on the outside, I have pretty much redone a little bit it so that the flat part is now on the pulley, which eliminates these movement noises like this. So there's now no ticking noise or whatever you want to call it. Um, to do this, you pretty much have to make a um, 90 degree turn here, which as you can see here, this belt does. It's not perfect because this 90 degree turn has problems in itself, but it fixes that problem. Um, the important thing here is that the knobs here, the tooth need to engage with uh, the gear here. So that's something important and that's why we have to do the 90 degree turn here on the long part. Sorry, it stretches, stretches it out. Um, this is, a, well, it's not a problem, but it's an annoyance and it may turn into a problem. The other thing I had was that the hot end here, let me get through here, so like this. The hot end here installed um, likes to clock if you accidentally forget to power off the machine properly. So if you use the machine, it heats up, sprints things and so on, 
and you just uh, pull out the power or turn it off and forget to let it cool down, it will jam, which cost me a print and it also cost me a nozzle. Um, the good thing is it's relatively easy to clean up. To do that, depending on how bad it is, you may be able to heat the nozzle up and remove the filament by, let me get around here, by pulling out the filament from here. This mostly should work. Oh, sorry. This should mostly work, but unfortunately not all the time. So to get it to work all the time, we have to do it a little bit different. So let's get into an art degree. So if you aren't able to pull out the wire completely from here, you may need to remove the PTFE tubing from here. So you can push this one down, the black thing, and then you can pull out the tubing, which you have to do while the uh, hot end is warm, or pretty much while the hot end is completely uh, warm and the PLA is melted inside. So you can pull it out. Then you can remove it and clip off the part that is burned or that is molten. This happened to me. What also happened to me, as you can see here, the build blade is a little bit scratched up. Um, that's because sometimes, for whatever reason, the build blade is not perfectly at the right height. Um, so the sea level may shift over time, which I haven't quite figured out why, but it happens. To fix that, you have two possibilities. The first one could be that the lead screws here and here can be not synchronized. So that means that one side is higher than the other, which means that the bed isn't quite level. Um, to fix that, there are two possibilities. Either you screw it up completely to the top and synchronize it there by measuring the distance between both and get them equal. What I have found out is the best way though is to get these couplers here at the same height. So the right and the left one here are at the same height. So this one here, this height. And by completely moving the plate down, you pretty much synchronize them that way. Fixes this problem really easy. The other possibility is to uh, add, uh, which you should do regardless, in the startup of your printer that it does an automatic um, bed level leveling procedure so that is it's uh, measuring all the points on the bed and levels itself. That way you can prevent most of the very bad um, crashes in the hotbed. What I've also found out is that the hotbed itself doesn't need that much heat. It's perfectly fine to print PLA with 40 degrees uh, temperature on the bed. Uh, at least for me that worked perfectly well and it sticks perfect pretty much. Um, one important thing is that you need to control this uh, connector box here in the back. Let me get through here. This one here. Because sometimes if you need to repair something or change something, this cable can get loose like you see now. Uh, the left side hinge is a little bit loose. You need to fix that up so that nothing uh, gets disconnected. This is very important. Otherwise your temperature sensor or your fan may not work and something may clock or worse something may um, destroy itself. So those are the problems I have encountered. There are also problems like the printer when starting to print crashing randomly and restarting. This is a problem as far as I know with the firmware and you need to contact Tronxy for that 
to get uh, the current firmware. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get the firmware off my printer, so I could upload it. And also the source code isn't available from TronC directly, so um, you can't compile it yourself, so you're pretty much stuck at um, asking TronC for the firmware. If you are missing the image while printing, so with the normal Tronxy, um with the normal Tronxy slicer, you get a nice image and that sometimes may be missing because um, the normal Cure version doesn't work with G2Box. But let's wrap it up for here, for now, and let's move it a little bit around to talk about the rest. So, now I've moved it a little bit to the side, and what happened often to me is that the filament doesn't want to get th through this um, run-out sensor here. So, this one may not really work, and the filament doesn't really go through when you want to insert it. Um, the best way to fix it is either to replace it, or to make a small sharp cut on the filament and then it should thread through properly. Um, the next thing, you need to ensure that these gears here are really tight, otherwise they may actually start to run loose and well that's not really great because you will lose steps and have no way to figure out why. Another thing I've noticed that I may be able to fix in the future with a few prints would be this cable here, the, back, the black big ribbon cable, which if the uh, print bed is all the way up, squishes it here and probably may rub it and is perhaps destroying it over time. So that's a big issue that should be addressed. Um, but I think that wraps up most of it. What is interesting is that the um, drag chain here wasn't making as much problems as I thought, even though it hangs here pretty much loose on top. So that's something I should fix in the future, but it's fortunately not as bad as I, uh, as I thought. And also the print bed, at least for me, is pretty much flat. So there aren't any big curvatures in there. I could get it down to, I think, 0 0.05 millimeters in plus or minus, uh, plus or minus in the, um, in the complete field. So it's pretty much, it's flat enough to print, no problem. Um, this can be a problem. You may need to remove the bed, bend it a little bit, or do a few tricks with the screws here. As a short explanation how to solve the problem if, you bend, if your bed is bent but not too much, you can do a lot of outer bed levelings and inch, so to say, toward the goal. So basically make an outer level, look where the, um, well, where the values are off by too much and then get the screw a little bit more tight or a little, little bit more loose. And that way you can straighten out the bed a little bit and get everything nice and flat. You should do this, by the way, when the bed is hot, so that you actually get the proper um, temperature and proper, um, how should I say it, um, the, the bed, when it gets hot, is going to stretch and bulge a little bit. And if you measure it when cold, this bulge may be different than when it is hot. So make sure that the bed is hot and then do the auto leveling procedure and do the manual levering here. Also, what I found out is that you need to use a proper cable for the power supply. Otherwise, you may actually get shocked, which happened to me. The power supply itself seems to be wired correctly, so there is no problem with that. But if you are not having ground connected in your wire or something, you may need uh, to replace the wire because you may get shocked, which is not great. But the entire frame seems to be grounded properly, even though it is um, anodized, which I was 
pretty much a little bit surprised by that. But after measuring everything through, it looks like everything is crowned, which is pretty good. So, I think that wraps up all the problems and fixes I have found out so far. Um, the biggest problem by far is the clogging of the nozzle and something of a, of a cooling problem, which I expected. Um, as you can see, I have already printed a replacement here of the cream part. Um, which does a little bit better job. Let's see if, if I can get it in here. Yes. But unfortunately not by much. So this is perhaps something I will replace as well as the hot end. Um, but overall I'm very happy with this printer and it prints really fast and surprisingly good results even though it's relatively cheap. At least for the size of the printer. So. I hope this small problems and fixes for problems helps you out. And if you have other problems that, that you can't solve or figure out by yourself, feel free to write them in the comments and I hope I can figure the problem out with you and we can find a solution for your problem. And well, I guess that wraps up the vi this video. So until then.